We celebrate you, Papa. Hallelujah. Menda Gayata. Are we ready? I'm ready. Adoba Egabo Zataya. Lift those two hands above your head. Put them together with a joyful shout. Let's receive our Papa, Dr. Amen Damina. Glory. Somebody happy this morning. Father, we rejoice that we are known by you and we rejoice that we are called by your name. We are called by your name to function in your office. Thank you, Jesus. You paid for all of our transgressions. You were offered for our offenses. You were raised again for our justification. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. For our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. We stand in this grace. Thank you, Father. As your word comes forth, it comes forth with clarity. Whatever is not planted by God is rooted out. Bodies and yokes are destroyed. Your people are built up, equipped, edified, and Jesus is glorified. We give you praise for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name, and every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Lift your right hands to heaven. Let's release our faith together. As we say these words, I am born of God. I am born of the word. The word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the word. I do the word naturally. Therefore today, I will understand the word of his grace. I will be built up. By the end of this service, I will never be the same. Never ever be the same again. In Jesus name. And every believer says a powerful amen. We want to welcome everybody to this service watching by way of Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, all of the social media community. We want to welcome you to the service today, guys. It's going to be an exciting, exciting service. You want to share the video on all the pages, join as many groups as possible, tag some people, drag everybody to hear this word. It will change their life forever. Our radio audience in Aquaibom, get some more people to hook up to this radio station. We're going to have an adventure in the word of his grace. All our campuses around the world, we love you. We're glad you're part of the service this morning. All the citizens around the world. And you know all the power city members around the world, August the 1st to the 8th will be homecoming 2022. <laughs> August the 1st to the 8th will be homecoming 2022. Also, July, from July the 5th, July the 5th, that's a Monday, the first Monday of July, right till the end of July, will be exclusive Bible school for only power citizens, global. We are not opening the Bible school for everybody, only members of power city we want to spend the time with in July. We want to give you exclusive Bible school. Well, we're going to teach you things that are only exclusive to this mandate. All right, so that's why there are no adverts. So everybody online who is a power citizen and in the campuses, your campus coordinators already have the information and the forms. You better grab the forms quickly and fill them. We have accommodation for about 150 people on first, first come, first serve basis. So if you're interested, get on it quickly, 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 all over the world. It's exclusive for power citizens. Isn't that beautiful? It's going to be serious in July. Very, very serious. So, all of this information, we're not putting them out on social media. The only reason why I'm announcing it here now is because we have people on social media who are power city members who need to know this so they can jump on it immediately. Now, if you're interested in the Bible school and you don't know who to talk to, just shoot a mail to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com and tell me that you're a citizen and you want to be in the Bible school for July. 
and then we will contact you. Make sure you put all your details and your location, your phone numbers, so we can reach out to you. Are we excited about that in the church? It's going to be very beautiful this month of, of July. And then from the first Sunday of July to the last Sunday of July will be 30 days of glory. Season what? Season 9. It's going to be brutal. Aya daba daba ya. Yeah, yeah, 30 days of glory, July. You want to get everybody involved. Those of you that can come down, come down, take your vacation, shut down that whole month and eat the word, both in the Bible school and in the 30 days of glory. It's going to be double barrel. God punish the devil. Praise God. Are we excited to be in church this morning? Can we celebrate the word of God with a shout, everybody? Glory! Grab your pen, your notebook, your Bible. You can be seated with your sweet, smart self as we get into the Word of God. I'm teaching this morning a continuation on the laborer and the harvest. The laborer and the harvest. The laborer and the harvest. And of course, the radio audience in Aquaibom, if you're interested in the Bible school, the adverts are playing on all radio stations, phone numbers, WhatsApp numbers to reach out to. And of course, you can stop at the church office, number 98, Waniba Road, Uyo, Aquaibom State. Grab your phone, I mean your form, and get yourself ready for the one month Bible school in July. All right? <clears throat> Matthew chapter 9, verse 36 to 38. Matthew Chapter 9, verse 36 to 38. <clears throat> the laborer and the harvest. But when they saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and they were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Next verse. Then said he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Next verse. Pray therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send for laborers into his harvest, that he will push out laborers into his harvest. Now, just before I get into the teaching, I also forgot something. We'll be in London from the 2nd to the 5th of June. 2nd to the 5th of June. The whole of United Kingdom and Europe, that whole region, we're having homecoming in London. All right? We're having homecoming in London. So all of you in the London, United Kingdom, in Europe, all of you, make yourselves available. Begin to plan. Begin to book your flights and book the hotels. Now, for details to be part of the United Kingdom and Europe conference, my office will pin the details on the screen. You can get the emails, the numbers, the WhatsApp to reach out and begin to plan for the second to the fifth of june the conference will be in london all the info are on my facebook page check it out there on the broadcast praise god all right so we started looking at the call of the missionary the call of the missionary a missionary is a man on a mission a man on a mission he is the man on an assignment he is not a man that is just busy. He is a man on a divine assignment. That is a missionary. A missionary is not a white man who left America or Europe and came to Africa to preach to us. A missionary doesn't have to leave a country to another country. Within your city, you are a missionary. You are a man on a mission. Within your community, in your school, in your office, you're a missionary. In your neighborhood, you're a missionary. A missionary is a man on a mission. Missionary. A man on a mission. Look at John chapter 1 verse 6. John chapter 1 verse number 6. <clears throat> John chapter 1 verse 6. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. What a description. What a testimony. A man sent from God. A man sent from God. That was the conclusion because when it was written, John was already dead. 
Why would they call him a man sent from God? That means he bore the signs of a man sent from God. There was something they saw in John that convinced them that he was a man sent from God. It's not that they had a voice that told them, this is a man sent from God. Their own conclusion was that this man is sent from God. It's like Jesus said to Nicodemus. No, I mean, Nicodemus said to Jesus, no man can do these things that thou doest except God be with him. So their conclusions were as a result of the signs that they saw. So John had signs that persuaded people that he was a man sent from God. That means he brought the message of the Lord to the people. So he qualifies to be a man sent from God. The man of God is described by two things. Anybody you call a man of God is described by two things. Number one, he is a man that has the signs of God. When you see a man of God, he has with him the signs of God. You need to know if God is in manifestation somewhere where there are signs. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 23, see what Brother Paul says about when God is in a place. 1 Corinthians 14, 23. Mm -mm. If therefore the whole church be come together into one place and all speak with tongues, and there come in those that are unlearned or unbelievers, will they not say that you are mad? Next verse. But if all prophesy, and there come in one, that believeth not. One that believeth not. Or, I can't see all that you put on that screen. Something is wrong with your computer. Let me grab my Bible. <clears throat> Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 14. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 14 verse 23. If the... If therefore the whole church be come together into one place and all speak with tongues and there come in those that are unlearned or unbelievers, will they not say that you are mad? But if all prophesy and there come in that one that believeth not or one unlearned, he is convinced of all, he is judge of all and those are the secrets of his heart made manifest. And so falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is in you of a truth. That means if a man that is an unbeliever comes among you and a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom or a prophecy exposes what is in his heart, he believes by that sign that God is among you. So when you find a man of God, there will be signs of God on that man. He has certain signs. That is why one of the reasons why ministry is by grace. Ministry is not by might nor by power. It's by grace. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 10. Brother Paul speaking to the brethren in Corinth. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 10 said. But by the grace of God I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I. But the grace of God which was with me. I am what I am by the grace of God. In Ephesians chapter 4 verse 7. See what brother Paul will say about a man that is sent by God. But unto every one of us is given grace. According to the measure of the gift of Christ. Look at Romans chapter 12 verse 4 and 5. Romans chapter 12 verse 4 and 5. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. Next verse. So we, being many, are one body in Christ, and everyone members one of another. So grace is that which presents 
or brings forth signs of the message. What we call the signs of the call of God. When you say a man that is called by God, he carries with him a grace, signs. There are things that distinguishes a man that is called by God. There are remarkable signs, very remarkable, that makes you know that this man is not ordinary. There is something about this man that is not ordinary. And that is developed by equipping. Because when we begin to equip you to answer to the call, by equipping, grace multiplies. By the multiplication of grace, you begin to command an atmosphere, an environment that makes people know that there's something about this man. He is not like others. It's called grace. It's called grace. I remember when we started Power City newly, then it was Power Chapel. Power Chapel started as, you know, Power City started as Power Chapel. I changed the name as knowledge began to increase. I called it Chapel because in that time when we started Power, Power Chapel, all churches were called Chapel, including Winner's Chapel. So everybody was chapeling everywhere. So we too, we chapeled along. But as knowledge grew, and the Spirit God, God said to me, you're not a chapel, you're a city set on a hill that cannot be healed. So I canceled a chapel and put city. You know, all right? So when we started, I had two guys that came to acquire bomb with me. They were learning ministry from me. They were living with me. I went everywhere with them. One of them could sing very well, and one of them could pray very well. The one that could pray was the one leading prayer. The one that could sing was leading songs, and then I would teach the word. That's how we were together, a team. And when I'm traveling to go and preach, I take two of them with me. And I was exposing them to ministry and teaching them ministry. But they were too much in a hurry and they were ambitious, two of them. I think they are still in a choir, but they may even be listening to me now. Some of you will know them in church. Yeah. And then after a few years, we have started Power, Power Chapel. One of them was always leading in praise worship and he would sing special songs. And the other one would lead in prayer. And we were just enjoying ourselves working together as a team. But after a while, you know, it was very obvious to everybody that I was the one in charge of this whole thing. These guys were just following me and learning. But they wouldn't take that. So competition began to occur among them. And then they began to say to me, you're not the only one that is called. We too are called. So sometimes we too will need to preach. Don't just make us sing and pray. We too have to be preaching. Maybe we should be rotating it. You preach this Sunday. I preach the other Sunday. The other one, I say, ah, 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 wait, let's start. Let's, let's go back to history. Both of you came to me and said you wanted to work under me. You wanted to learn ministry. This ministry is my own. You people only came to learn. But now that there is competition, let's part ways. You go and start your own where you will preach every time. You go and start your own where you preach every time. Let there be no conflict of interest. So they say, yeah, that's exactly what they are talking about because they cannot continue to be under my shadow. I said, this thing has nothing to do with shadow. It has something to do with grace and calling. It has to do with equipping. So two of them left. I prayed for them and I released them. Today, none of them, till today, none of them has been able to find their legs. I'm talking about far back, 1996, 97. That's when it happened. Till today, they are still looking for their legs. One of them, after trying to get married, he could not get married. I had to give him money, help him marry for him. Because there, there's a sign. When you're called by God, there are signs. Even if everybody leaves you, if you're called by God, another people will come to you. You can't stop a man that is called. You know Aaron... The children of Israel were fighting with Aaron over who is called. Aaron said, okay, let us prove the call of God now. Let's bring dry ground and put on top of dry pulpit. And tomorrow morning, anybody's stick that germinates on dry stick, dry ground. By tomorrow, anybody's stick that germinates, that's the one that is called. By the following day, Aaron's rod budded. 
there, when you see a man that is called, there are signs that stands him out. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody. Those signs actually are developed by training, by equipping. And as you yield to training and equipping, grace multiplies. And as grace multiplies, it makes you stand out. It makes you stand out. All of us are called. But there are signs that follow those who have answered the call and submitted themselves to equipping and the multiplication of grace. That's what I'm talking about. There will be signs. So he has signs of that call. He has signs of that call. Are we teaching here? Yeah. And anywhere you take him to, he stands out. Because it's a grace. It's not ability. It's not effort. It's not about what people want. It's not public opinion. Is a grace, a caress. And you can't buy it in the market. If you don't have it, you don't have it. It's a grace. There's no competition, no fight. It's a grace. And this grace cannot be duplicated. You're not hearing what I'm saying. You can't duplicate. Did I tell you last Sunday that the call of God on a man goes with the man? Did I say that last Sunday? Anywhere he goes, it goes. With, if he dies, he dies with the call. He dies with that ministry. Nobody transfers it to another. We can transfer training. We can transfer teaching. But we cannot transfer grace. Because grace comes from Jesus. And the grace multiplies in your life as you keep learning his word. Please, this is very important. Very, very important. So, the man of God is not a noisemaker. The man of God is a man that has the signs of God. He has the signs of God. Let me be honest with you. The kind of things that our church have been through in this city, if God never called me, and if, if, I, really, if really I was not a man of God, this church will not be in existence. How many of you know what I'm talking about? This church will not be in existence. This church is, is in existence and you're enjoying all of this in spite of what we've been through, in spite of everything that has happened to this ministry because God called us. God called this ministry. God called me. And that's why there's no conspiracy, no amount of bad mouth, no amount of attack, no amount of disloyalty, no amount of opposition, even from within, has been able to quench the light of this house. Why? Because I am called by God. There are signs of a calling. Am I teaching here? Yeah. You can do nothing against a man that God has called. Even God cannot withdraw the calling. Is it men that will stop the calling? <laughs> Even God Almighty cannot withdraw the calling. Is it men that will stop the calling? No man can stop it. No man can stop that call. And that's why we're equipping you so that you too will produce those signs and that grace so that you can fulfill the will of God for your life in spite of and irrespective of whatever comes your way. Teaching good. He has the word of the Lord. That's the second thing. A man of God has the word of the Lord. A man of God has the word of the Lord. And the word of the Lord will always make people free. The word of the Lord will continue to bring encouragement. The word of the Lord will always bring comfort. And the word of the Lord will always bring correction. The word of the Lord. But the most important thing is that the word of the Lord draws men towards God. The word of the Lord draws men towards God. That is a man sent from God. Another thing you will see in the life of a man that is sent from God is that man is a man of prayer. He gives himself to prayer because he knows he has been sent. He knows he has been sent. How 
How much we desire to have men that are sent from God. Men sent from God are a blessing to any society. They are a blessing to any generation. Men that are sent from God are a blessing to any generation. I mean, some of you that want to be honest with yourselves, just picture in a, in a, in a split second what will have been missing in your life if I was not in your life? Just picture for a second. What will have been missing in your life today if I wasn't in your life? So men that are sent from God are a generational blessing. Blessed are the feet of those who bring good tidings. We bring the blessing. They are a blessing. They are a blessing. So now we said that the missionary can be split into three or four, 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 four responsibilities. Number one, a missionary is a fisherman, a fisher of men. Number two, a missionary is a tent maker. Number three, a missionary is a tent mender. Fisherman or fishers of men, tent makers, tent menders. Matthew chapter 9 where we read, the harvest is plentiful but the laborers are few. Who is a missionary? A missionary is a laborer in the harvest. A missionary is a man on a mission. What mission? The mission of God to teach. Teaching all men to observe all that Jesus has commanded. So laborers are missionaries. Laborers are missionaries. Those who toil at the work. A man that cannot toil in the harvest is not sent by God. Any man that cannot toil, that is not toiling in the harvest, is not sent by God. When God sends you, he sends you to toil. He sends you to labor. <laughs> you know, I love this verse of scripture. Put it up for me on the screen. The book of Mark, chapter 3, verse 14. Mark 3, 14. And he ordained 12 that they should be with him first and that he might send them forth to preach. So the first call of God is a call to be with him. Anytime God calls you, he is calling you to be with him. Watch everybody. Pastor Prince, come. Come. What did I do? I called. What did he do? He responded by coming. Step up, Pastor Prince. What some people do is, when God says, Pastor Prince, come. They go and open a ministry. You ask them why, they will say, God, call me. There is a difference between calling and sending. When I call, I'm not sending. I'm calling you to come so I can now detail you what I will have you to do. But many people, when they say, God, call me, they will call the church the call of God Ministries International. No, he didn't send you. He called. Now, Pastor Prince, step back again. Let's try something together. If I say, Pastor Prince, come. Just walk there and lift your hand and do like you're starting a ministry. Okay, Pastor Prince, come. 
How does he look? Funny, right? Many preachers today have not even answered the caller, but they have started a ministry. That's why they don't know what to preach. That's why they are preaching nonsense. Because the call is so that you can come. Let me give you content. So that a, a man that is sent without a message, is he sent? Because when you are sent, what will you be given? A message. So when God calls you, the first thing is to answer the call and come to the caller. He called them to be with him. That as a result of being with him, he will now send them forth. Being in this church means you have answered the call. Did you understand what I'm saying? All of you in Power City, you have answered the call. Part of answering the call is sitting down to learn. Sitting down to be equipped. Sitting down to understand the message. Then, when the message is understood, you are now sent to go on a mission. Is it clear? Uh -huh. So, thank you, Pastor Priest. So, when people say, God, call me, tell them, tell them, call you. Did you answer the caller? He say, yes. How did you answer? I've started a ministry. Tell him, you have not even answered the caller yet. God called some. Others just went. You, you are now understanding. Are you understanding now? God called some. Others just went. And if you come across ministers who just went, it's very clear. It's very clear. There are those preachers who are preaching for their belly. They are in ministry for their stomach. Stomach infrastructure is the motivation for their ministry. A missionary is a man with a clear mandate, a clear assignment, a clear message. He's not confused. And it begins with the call of God and the man answering the call. When you meet a man that is sent by God, his priorities are different. His priorities are different. So, the fisherman, the fisherman, Psalm 67, verse 2. I will read both the Amplified and the Living Bible. Let's start with King James. 67, verse 2. For they shall soon be cut down like the 67, not 37. Psalms 67, 2. That thy way might be known upon earth. Thy saving health among all nations. That's King James. Amplified. Amplified will give us more expressions to that verse. Amplified version. That your way may be known upon earth. Your saving power. Your deliverances. And your salvation among all nations. That's the gospel. Your saving power, your deliverances, and your salvation among all nations. That's the mess mandate of the fisherman. Living Bible, LB, Living Bible. Living Bible translation. Psalm 67, verse 2, Living Bible. I hope you have that. Living Bible. If you don't have Living Bible, Put back in James. Let me know you don't have living Bible. You see, does he have living Bible? You'll have been wasting my time. The living Bible is almost the same thing with the King James. His saving power might be known in all the nations. The good news of Christ, death, burial, resurrection, ought to be preached in all the nations. So he said, send us into all the world. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go 
tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is Lord. We used to sing that song. I hope we still sing it. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's the mandate on the mountain. Over the hills, in the valley, everywhere. That is the mandate of the fisherman. He goes everywhere. He goes fishing everywhere. Hallelujah. That's the song of the missionary. The world is his parish. The missionary's parish is the entire world. The gospel is his message. Preaching is his tool. The world is his parish. The gospel is his message. Preaching is the tool of the missionary. Something that Jesus said in Mark 16, 15, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The missionary has a passion for souls. And that passion burns in his heart. He is always looking for souls. Every ministry and church knows the importance of world evangelism. At least they talk about it. But very few talk about it. And so we conclude that a church that doesn't put evangelism in first place is not in the will of God. A church that evangelism is not priority is not in the will of God because the will of God is to have all men to be saved and to come through the knowledge of the truth. So we must always be seen planning for the unsaved. You need a missionary orientation to reach out for more. Look at the emphasis of the fathers we study priorities. Luke chapter 15 verse 1 to 7. Luke chapter 15 verse 1 to 7. Then drew near, then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them saying, what man of you having an hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? And when he had found it, he laid it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he called together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repented more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. He makes it a must to find one. So there's more urgency to reach out to souls than to maintain those that are saved. So a soul that responds to the gospel is more important to God than men being in Soteria season 9. A soul that responds to the gospel is more important to God than having a Bible study for spiritual growth. Hmm. The emphasis is first of all souls. Sometimes you get carried away with learning doctrine. And you know I'm an ardent teacher of doctrine. I'm crazy about teaching you doctrine. But the priority in ministry should be in reaching the loss. There's joy in heaven over one sinner. More than 99 who are in Bible study. Are you following? Yes. God wants them to be brought in. So the priority should be souls. He emphasizes on men getting saved. 
So a missionary is a man who is always going for more souls. How can they hear without a preacher? How can the preacher preach except he be sent? How convinced are we about the power of the gospel? I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It's the power of God unto salvation. When Paul said, I'm not ashamed there, he implies, I am not reserved about preaching it. I am not conservative about preaching it. I'm not economical in preaching the gospel. So the fisher of man is always looking out to bring the lost into the kingdom. Always. That is his dream. That is his prayer. That is his passion. The fisher of man also is equipped with the gift of the spirit. Gift of the spirit. Acts chapter 4 verse 33. Acts chapter 4 verse 33. And as is 33. Acts 4 33. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. Great power, great grace. The signs confirmed the message. And the Lord was walking with them, Mark 16, 20, confirming his word with signs and wonders. So when you go out to evangelize, look out for signs. Pray for the sick. Pray for people and ensure you look out for the signs, for the testimonies, for the results. In Acts chapter 8, verse 5 and 6, Philip went down to Samaria. Acts 8, 5. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. Next verse. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. So signs and wonders are the baits of the fisherman. He uses signs and wonders to draw people and then gives them the message for the miracle of their soul. The call of God does not need more grace. Give me grace to follow. Abundant grace to follow. Give me grace to follow. Thy grace is enough. <laughs> you don't need more grace. The call of God on your life is the grace of God. That call is the grace. You don't need more grace. You don't need to pray for grace. That call on your life is the grace of God. So the call of God does not need more power. More power. More power. More of you in my life. It's a long time I had that song. Huh? More love. Get born again, my friend. The day you got born again, all the love of God came on your inside. The day you got born again, all of God's power came on your inside. You don't need more. You have all. Use it. A man not using it is as good as a man who doesn't have it. The proof that you have it is when you start using it. I'm teaching good. You never know how loaded you are in this church till you leave this church and go to a place where they have never had the gospel before. You will be the latest Abel Damina in that place. I'm, I'm telling you. You will teach like these people will come out. They will write notes. Then when you finish, you will do ask the counselor. They will ask you. You will be surprised how you will be answering questions. You don't know what is entering you. Jacques Olaraba. I know what I'm talking about. Are you not learning? I know you're learning. Uh -uh. I know even your faces show that you're learning something. If you are not learning, you think I'll be laboring. I'm laboring because I am seeing that thing is working. I'm telling you. Just go for a conference somewhere where they don't know much. Then stand there and open your notes. 
and read four five lines of your note you will see how they will shout the gods have come to us in form of men don't shine light in light shine light in darkness the glory of light is in darkness and the world is full of darkness so take the light to the world am i teaching good yeah take the light to the world take the light in the world Woo. walk in the light beautiful light Come where the dew drops of mercy shines bright. Shine on among us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. Walk in the light, beautiful light. Come where the dew drops of mercy shines bright. Pastor Praise is smiling because in his mind he's thinking of the old choir master is awake. Shine on around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill that cannot be hid. Are you getting blessed? Are you getting blessed? Are you getting blessed? So, you don't need more power. You don't need more light. You don't need more fire. Shine the one you have. When Philip went down to Samaria in Acts chapter 8, he went there as a regular believer. He went there as an ordinary brother. He, was, he didn't go there as an ordained minister. It's on the basis of his continuity with evangelism that in Acts 21, they call him Philip the Evangelist. It's like if you start preaching all over your community, preaching for ev to everybody and praying for everybody. Before you know it, in that community, they will call you the pastor. Is it not true? Please go to the pastor's house. You have become the pastor of that community. Any small thing, they say, have you seen the pastor? Please go to the pastor. Please, let's go and meet the pastor for prayer. You are not their pastor, but because of your activities in the community, they have identified you as the pastor. Am I communicating at all? Yes. Philip the evangelist, because of his activity with evangelism, they gave him that title. Ministry is a verb. Ministry is not a noun. Ministry is what you do. There's no noun for ministry. It's a verb. So the signs and the wonders that follow the word of God authenticate the message. In Matthew chapter 10 verse 1 and 2 and 8, look at what Jesus said to those disciples. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Next verse. Now the names of the twelve apostles are these. Simon called Peter, Andrew his brother, James the sons of Zebedee and his John, John his brother. Give me verse 8. Verse 8 of the same context. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. Freely you have what? Received. Freely what? Freely give. He gave them power. Along with the mandate to preach is the power of God. Along with the mandate to preach the gospel is the power of God. So these men go out to preach, yet they go out to demonstrate God's power. God has empowered men to demonstrate his power. These signs shall follow those that believe. Mark 16, 15 to 20. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. Hallelujah. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves. To think anything as of ourselves. Our sufficiency is of God. Lift your right hand and say very loud with me. I heal the sick with these hands. I demonstrate the power of God. I preach the word and I demonstrate God's power in healing, casting out devils, 
cleansing the lepers and manifesting the glory of God. I am called and empowered by Jesus Christ. I didn't hear a good amen. We preach, we heal, we cleanse wherever that need arises. So we are the ones that minister salvation. We are the ones that minister salvation. So also, we are the ones that minister healing. We are the ones. We don't call God to minister. We minister as an extension of God to the sick. We pray for them. If we find demons making noise, we excuse them out of that person. We preach and we pray and declare God's mandate over his people. Are we still here? Are we still here? Yeah. The fisher of men goes to win souls. Now let me mention something. The gospel is crowd oriented. Write that in capital letters. The gospel is crowd oriented. Crowd. The gospel of Christ is crowd oriented because Christ died for all. So we must preach the gospel to reach more people. Acts chapter 2 verse 41. Acts chapter 2 verse 41. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day they were added unto them. How many? 3,000 souls in one service. 3,000 people were added to a church. Why? Because the gospel is crowd oriented. Christ died for all. The Bible in Acts chapter 2 says, And the Lord added daily to the church such as are being saved. The Lord did not just automatically add. The reason why the Lord added is because they were preaching daily. So as a result of them preaching daily, souls were added on daily basis. The gospel is crowd oriented. In that same book of Acts, 5,000 people were added in another meeting. 5,000 people were added to the church because the gospel is crowd oriented. In Acts chapter 5, verse 13 and 14, Acts chapter 5, verse 13 and 14, and of the rest does no man join himself to them, but the people magnify them. Next verse. And believers, we are the more added to the Lord. Multitudes, both of men and women. Multitudes. Because the gospel is crowd-oriented. Multitudes. Give me the next verse. 15. In so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets and led them on beds and couches that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them multitudes of men and of women. So what we are doing is not just small, small, small. No, we are out for the multitudes. But we are not going to bring them by who crook and means. We are going to bring them by pure evangelism and discipleship. So that means there is a lot of work to be done. A lot of work to be done. A lot of work to be done. Multitudes. Look at verse 16 of Acts 5. Acts chapter 5 verse 16. There came also a multitude. Out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem. Bringing sick folk. And them which were vexed with unclean spirits. And they were healed every one. All of them were healed. Multitudes. Look at Acts chapter 6 verse 1. Acts chapter 6 verse Verse number one, Acts 6, 1. And in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplied. Disciples multiplied. That means there was ongoing labor 
in raising disciples and preaching. And it got to a point where it multiplied. It kept growing in leaps and bounds. Acts chapter 8 verse 6. So that you know that the gospel is crowd oriented. Acts chapter 8 verse 6. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake. Hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. The people, the multitudes. Look at Acts 11.21. Acts 11.21. And the hand of the Lord was with them. And a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. How many believed? A great number and turned. Unto the Lord. You must look big. Think big. Walk big. You must walk. With growth in mind. You must think growth. You must picture multiplication. Very important. You must want more. Acts 13 44. Acts 13 44. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. How many people came? Almost the whole city. To do what? To hear the teaching of the word of God. I'm telling you. It's happening in Aquaibon. The word of God is penetrating everywhere. The city is opening up to the truth of the gospel. It's opening up. It's opening up. It's opening up. It's just a matter of time. The explosion will hit everywhere. Somebody shout, I hear you. Yeah? Almost the whole city came together, not to get miracles, to hear the word of God. That means the word of God became valuable in that city. People began to see the importance of God's word. Acts chapter 13 verse 48 1348. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. Praise God. 49. Give me that for, verse for, next verse. And the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region. The word was published. Like we're publishing the word all over Aquaibom State and around the world. There's an ongoing, 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 aggressive publishing of the word. Praise God. When Paul got to Ephesus, Acts 19.1, he got 12 people saved. As they continued, some believed. Look at Acts 19.17 to 18. Acts 19, 17 to 18. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus. And fear fell on them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And many that believed came. Many that did what? Many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. They came. Many. Not a few. Many. Look at verse 19. Many of them also which use curious arts brought their books together, burnt them before all men, and they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. Verse 20, oh glory to God. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. What grew? The word of God. The gospel is for many. The gospel is for many. The gospel is for many. Even when Paul was under detention, Acts chapter 28 verse 8. Paul was under detention. Acts 28 verse 8. And it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and of a blood, bloody, bloody flocks to whom Paul entered in and prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. Next verse. Verse 9. So when this was done, others also which had diseases in the island came and were healed. Next verse. Who also honored us with many honors. And when we departed, they led us with such things as were 
necessary. Look at verse 24 of Acts 28. Acts 28, 24. And some believed the things which were spoken, and some believed not. So there are times people will not believe for some time, but we keep at it until they believe. So, it wasn't many people that rejected the gospel. More people received the gospel than those who rejected it. See that. Acts 28, 30. Getting blessed? 28, 30. And Paul dwelt two whole years. How many years? Two years in his own hired house. And received all that came in unto him. He stayed in that city for two years. The gospel is for all. And as a missionary, you must have a crowd orientation. You must have a crowd orientation. Now listen, not seeker sensitive. Not seeker sensitive. Seeker sensitive are those churches that say, use every strategy you can to bring them in. That's seeker sensitive. No. No. We are talking about a crowd that will come as a result of the genuine teaching and preaching of God's word. That's what we are talking about. Not seeker sensitive. In fact, they got seeker sensitive to a point where they even have what they call Chrislam. They have what they call Chrislam. Christianity with Islam combined together in a place. So it's not Christianity, it's not Islam, it's Chrislam. Because of seeker sensitive. They are trying to accommodate everybody at the expense of the message. And they forget that the message has offense inside. Jesus said, if everybody speaks well of you, you are in trouble. There must be people that will reject what you have to offer. Because the gospel is a message of the cross and the cross is an offense. I'm teaching good. I said I'm teaching good. The gospel is for all. The fisher of man goes for more. His responsibility also increases as he continues to preach. In Acts chapter 20 verse 20, put it up for me. Acts chapter 20 verse 20. How I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but I've showed you and I've taught you publicly and from house to house. Most of what we are doing here today is public service because all of us came from different parts of town to worship. Some of us even came from other cities to come and worship here. All right? Now, as a missionary, you go to where the sinners are. You don't invite them to where you are. You go to them. A missionary goes to where, as a fisherman, a fisherman goes to where the fishes are. He may have a swimming pool in his house, but he doesn't fish in the pool. He has to go to the river where fishes are. So a, a Christian missionary goes to where the sinners are. Please, that's very important. My vision is to meet people where they are. A preacher of the gospel should have a fair estimate of his vision field. The second responsibility of a fisherman is he is a tent maker. Tent maker. That's where brother Paul comes in. Tent maker. Many were getting saved but the work has not, was not well established. We are not called to touch and go. Touch and go. No. It's not hit and run. A missionary must be able also to incorporate another aspect of the missionary's calling, which is tent making. Tent making implies to create the atmosphere for spiritual progress and development. That's tent making. To create the atmosphere for spiritual progress and development. That is tent making. First Peter 2 to brother Peter says, as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Do 
you discover that unlike Peter, when Paul came on the scene, he kept reaching out to those he had preached to. He went back so that he can establish them. That's tent making. He makes the atmosphere conducive for them to grow. Very important. Many people have learned to be fishermen, but they have not learned to be tent makers. So they are good in throwing seed, but they are not good in helping the people that they plant the seed into to be established. A missionary must be both a fisherman and a tent maker. Tent making missionary is the man whom having reached the people now seeks to create an atmosphere for them to grow in the Lord, for them to grow in grace, and for them to develop spiritually. You don't birth a baby and drop the baby on the street. No mother will do that. Even if there's a mother that will do that, there will be very few. And such a mother is because something inside her head is touching. You know why are they touch? Something they touch. That's why she can deliver a baby that she carried for nine months and drop the baby on the street. You begin to care for the baby. And that's the second aspect of the missionary's ministry. You now build tents. For example, we we'll read a pattern. You will see that the tent making aspect of this does not remove the fisherman aspect. That you are creating an atmosphere to teach people the word does not shut down your fisherman aspect. As you are teaching, you are still bringing in souls. As you are teaching, you are still bringing in souls. So the two aspects work together. You know, when you grow spiritually, you will move from knowledge to wisdom. <laughs> when you grow spiritually, you will move from knowledge to wisdom. Wisdom is the ability to apply the knowledge correctly. You will grow. Living and practicing what you know the right way. Tent maker. Acts 15, 33 to 34. Acts 15, 33 to 34. And after they had tarried there a, a, a space, they were let go in peace from the brethren unto the apostles. Notwithstanding, it pleased Silas to abide there still. To abide there. It pleased Silas. To go back there. To stay with the brethren to help them grow. And sometimes visiting a people you have helped to grow a while can take you a year or six months or three months or a month to see how they are faring. Recently we were in Kenya for two weeks. Two weeks. There was a time I was in America for one month. Some places I go to for a week. Some places I go to for three weeks. And as the years go by, there's a time I'll be gone from this church for three months. You won't see my eyes. I'm gone. Because you're not the only ones. Because I must reach other cities. I'm gone. I'll be with a, a particular congregation. Two months here. One month there. Another month there. Another month there. Maybe later on you see me come back after eight months. And when I come back, you will have doubled yourselves. Because all of you are matured. See, I hear you. Don't be afraid. That's part of the ministry. I'm not saying to make you feel bad. I'm just telling you the truth. I'll be gone. It's not every time you will see me here. So get what you can get when you see me. The word is enough for the wise. Amen? I said amen. Yeah. All our campuses... They want me physically too. And I, it's my responsibility too to be with them, spend time, get to meet some of them, get to visit some of them, sit among them, answer their questions, help them, take care of certain things that in online is not enough to produce. So the work is growing. See, I hear you. The work is growing. 
the work is growing. And as the work grows, responsibility grows. It's part of it. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, why is your hallelujah going down? It's because I said I'll go for eight months. I didn't say I will pack my load and go. If I said that one, you will not, you will not write again, but I didn't say I'm going to go. I said I will visit. I'll visit some campuses. Stay one month. Stay three weeks. Stay two months. Depending on the need. Depending on what you know, I sense in my heart is the right thing to do. But of course, you know, primarily you have me here. Amen. I said amen. amen. Praise God. We see that pattern in brother Paul. You know, in Acts chapter 19. Look at it. Let's read Acts chapter 19 verse, verse 5. Let's start from 5 because of time. So Paul meets people in Ephesus. When they had this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So he gets these 12 people born again. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Verse 7. And all the men were about 12. Verse 8. And he went into the synagogue and spoke boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading them the things concerning the kingdom of God. Next verse. But when divers were hardened and believed not, but spake evil of that way before the multitude, he departed from them and separated the disciples, disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannus. Next verse. And this continued by the space of how many years? Two years. So Paul went somewhere. It was looking like it would be one week. Then it became three weeks. Then it became two months. Then it became three months. Before he knew it, he was in that place for two years. These things are not planned. As the work grows, the need for these things suddenly shows up. Not just for me alone, even for you. Even for you. We could send you for missions somewhere. And as you start preaching, before you know it, you can't leave the place. I came to Aquaibon for a weekend program. This is 30 years. I came for a weekend, weekend. I didn't come here to stay. I came for a weekend program in Ona local government. That's where I was invited. That was my first point of call in Aquaibon, Ona. I landed Ona in the night. I preached that night. The next day I told them I have finished, I'm going. Because the journey took one and a half days. So one and a half plus one, that makes it two and a half. Three days on each, I want to go. And the brother said, no, you can't go, sir. I said, sir, I have a program in Abu Zaria. He said, you can't go. I said, sir, <laughs> nothing will stop me from going. So he gave me money. He said, go to Calabar, fly. Fly to Kaduna, go and preach, fly back. This money is more than enough. I've never seen that kind of money since I was born. No wonder Jesus said, any house you enter, anything they give you, collect. I've never seen that kind of money since I was born. So I said, ah, so ministry can be like this. I said, okay, I will come back. I will come back. So I collected the money, and I went and entered night bus. <laughs> It's only a fool that will use his first capital to go and eat tantalizers. I went and entered night bus. The man said, let the driver drop you. I said, no, I know my road. I'm going to stop at Uyo to do some things, then I will leave. Don't worry. Sure, you want me to come back. I'll be back. Don't worry. Because I didn't want the driver to see me in motor park. Because I'm supposed to go to airport. I calculated the money. I said, this money. What this money will do? Aeroplane no fit do up. I'm serious. I entered moto from Uyo to Aba. Entered night bus. Landed Zaria the next morning. I came out of the bus. I have arrived by flight. <laughs> I went to town. Did the things I needed to do. Preach that evening for them. And asked my friend to preach the rest. Entered another night bus. And I landed in New York. I have arrived from the airport. <laughs> in fact, to start with, nobody even asked me, did you fly or not? Because I came back at record time. The important thing was I arrived at the time. So we continue program. Program of two days became one week. One week became two weeks. Two weeks became three weeks. Three weeks became one month. One month became two months. Two months now is 30 years plus. We don't plan these things. We just obey God. We follow what God leads us to do. We just follow what God leads us to do. Somebody say, I hear you. 
And I eternally have no regrets obeying God. I have no regrets. I'm so glad that I obey God. And I will continue to obey him. Praise God. I said praise God. You too will never have regrets obeying God. Lift your hands and say I will obey God. No matter what it costs. Because at the end of the day. Obeying God pays eternally. I didn't hear a good amen. Three months became two years. Teaching the disciples. That means as he was teaching, he was reaching out for more. As he was teaching, he was reaching out for more. So you can see the tent maker as he is also reaching out to the unsaved. The twelve now must have been taught because in chapter 20 of Acts, the Bible says the Holy Ghost made them overseers. So which means it was not only the twelve. There, was, there were many people such that the twelve can be overseers of the crowd. So it was not just discipleship. It was discipleship plus evangelism. If I'm communicating, can I have a good amen? So once you invade a new community, you teach and train a team. The first thing you want to do as you start raising disciples is to equip a people in case you are needed to leave that society. You will have raised an army of people to take care. That's why no leader should be able to just lead alone. When you start leading and people start coming in to your house center, your campus, your house fellowship, among the people that are committed and faithful, you start giving delegated responsibility. You start giving responsibility until you are no more needed. A successful leader is a leader that will lead a people not to need him. Not to need him. Where you are not needed. Where you, whether you are there or not, everything is fine. That's success. Don't be a leader that wants to do everything. You cripple everybody around you. You must be a leader that is able to delegate and supervise. You supervise, and as you're supervising, you're withdrawing. As you're supervising, you're withdrawing. As you're supervising, till where you are no more needed. That's success. That's success. The more you are a leader that is not needed, the more successful you are. It means you are good in raising people. And when you raise them, you leave them to do the job. You only supervise. You only supervise. Both in the campuses, you know, and in all the house centers. That's how we should do. Because then we multiply leadership. And when there's multiplication of leadership, there will be explosion in outreaches. We multiply leaders. Don't be the one doing everything. Let people do other. Sometimes even allow people to do other thing, all the things. You just sit down and watch. Praise God. I said, praise God. And brother Paul left that place after the message was everywhere. Now take these two things as I close. Characteristics of the tent maker. Number one, the tent maker sees a congregation in a man. When he sees a man, he is not seeing a man. He is seeing a congregation. The tent maker sees a harvest in a seed. When he sees a seed, he is not seeing the seed. He is seeing a harvest. A man is a congregation for a tent maker. When he sees one man, that man is a platform to reach everyone. He is a platform. To reach everyone. One man, platform to reach everyone. I just came back from Bauchi State yesterday. We want to preach in a local government called Tafawa Balewa Local Government in Bauchi State. Some people say they say I will not come because preachers don't like going to those places. I say, not my kind of preacher. Me. I will enter anywhere for this gospel. So we went there. Dr. Gabriel is still there. I donated him to them for a few days. But he'll be back within this week. We were there. And then we found out that the man we went to preach for is the first pastor in Bauchi State that started an indigenous ministry. That's the first pastor. He's a prof. He's a professor. And the man was telling me that 1997 when I was preaching in our church in Jaws, he was in the meeting. He's been following me. So when he handed over his ministry to the bishop, 
that is taking over from him to oversee the ministry. The bishop said to him, my daddy in the Lord, who do you want to be my mentor? I need a mentor that will mentor me in ministry. He said, he told him, Dr. Abel Damina, go for him. So the bishop started following my teachings. And that is how they organized for me to come to Bauchi and go to Tafa Balewa. And then I discovered that in that Tafa Balewa, the whole church understands what I'm preaching. We were speaking the same language in that kind of place. We were speaking the same language. I was blessed to see that. Where this message has entered, even you, including me, we have no idea. We don't even know what God is doing. Pastor Matthew showed me a, a, an American lady, white American, in Wisconsin, in America, who has been following me for five years. I don't even know her. It's just Pastor Matthew that enabled me to know her. Otherwise, I wouldn't have known there's such a person. She said, all my messages, they have translated them in books, 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 all my series, and translated them for the deaf and the dumb. So she has a big facility for the deaf and the dumb. So as, as every day when I'm teaching, she will stand there and be ministering to the deaf and the dumb my messages. I didn't know such a thing is happening in America. I didn't know that. Pastor Matthew showed me their discussion. I said, my goodness. Where this thing is going, we have no idea at all. But God is doing it because it's his work. Yes. All we're just doing is we're just making our mouth available for God to be talking. He's the one doing the job. Faithful is he who call it, who also himself will do it. Are you all following what I'm teaching here? People are embracing the gospel of Christ. The message is breaking through leaps and bounds. The message is penetrating every man's world. You sit here and look at my face every Sunday. It, it not be like that too. <laughs> the thing don't jump fence. Too late for the devil. Glory to God. Huh. And friends, it's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. Yeah, because we're going, eto malata naba. we're going to make it so that you won't hear anything else. This is all you'll be hearing. All over the nations. Go tell it on the mountain. Over the hills. Everywhere. Glory to God. Glory to God. Say with me, I'm a fisherman. And I'm a tent maker. In a soul, I see a congregation. In a seed, I see a forest. One man is a platform to reach others. What brought me into that story was that one man, one man who has been following me since 97, became the platform to reach a community of his own people. One man never looked down on anybody. You never know what a person has the capacity to do where the gospel is concerned. You never can tell. There are people in China who are pushing this message. Pastor Matthew told me that in a particular place in India, there are a group of people that are fellowshipping with us every Sunday on their own. They are not a campus. We don't even, we, they don't even know that we're, we, we, you know, we're doing campuses. They just gathered, located my teaching, and they are growing in number, following, and then reach out to Pastor Matthew on WhatsApp. The impact is beyond you can imagine. We keep praying every day, and we keep preaching. Glory to God. Oh, I'm not hearing your amen. amen. Say with me, I'm a fisherman. I'm a tent maker. I create environment for spiritual growth among my disciples. I didn't hear you again. I'm a tent maker. I am a fisherman. I am always reaching out to bring souls to the kingdom of God. I didn't hear your amen. amen. And as the days go by, many more campuses will be launched around the world. As the days go by, many house centers will be opened all over Akwai Bomb State. As the days go by, many more disciples will be raised around the world. And as the day goes by, this gospel shall be preached all over the nations. If your amen is louder, you will be a part of what God is saying. Stand on your feet. That's all I've got for you in this service. Praise God. I say praise God. I said, praise God. So a man that is a tent maker will see a church in one person. He will see a church 
in one person. Next Sunday, I will talk about this tent making some more. We're going to talk about church planting, how to establish a church, how to establish a campus, and how to get people grounded and how to grow up the work. Hallelujah. Equipping the saints. Turn to your neighbor, say, I do the work of ministry. Tell your neighbor, grace is available. As we keep growing, the signs of a man of God will be evident in your life. Tell somebody as we keep growing, the signs of a man of God will be evident in your life. And when you are no more here, it will be said, there was a man sent from God whose name was Abel. You can call my name. And you can call your name. So when all is said and done, and you are no more here, men will announce there was a man sent from God whose name was Abel. Glory to God. 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 Just like I am very important in the history of your spiritual life. That's how you too is becoming important in the history of other people's spiritual lives. Do you understand what I just said? Just like I'm important in the history of your making. In the history of your growth and walking in the will of God. That is how God is making you also important in the history of other people's spiritual lives. And that is why, you know, if you stay away from evangelism and discipleship, you're doing yourself a disservice. You're denying yourself the opportunity to play a role in the gospel in people's lives. You're depriving them yourselves. You're depriving yourselves. I thank God for face mask. You know face mask? I thank God for face mask. It has helped me a lot. Because now I can move people Many people won't know I'm the one. Even when they stop, I'll still be wearing my own. But I was with Pastor Matthew and Pastor Prisca at the airport yesterday. Uh, uh, as soon as we got to the airport, I told them, my face max. <laughs> and then we're standing and talking, and people are coming. Hey, Dr. Damien, I just saw you from afar. I knew you were the one. I said, ah, even with the face mask, maybe we shall be wearing back marks and face masks. <laughs> There's a level to which you affect people's lives. You can't hide. You can't hide. A woman was sitting at the airport. I was talking with Pastor, uh, Pastor Gabe, Dr. Gabriel. The woman just ran and came to me and said, Daddy. So I looked at her. She said, you base, I'm in your base state. You don't know me, but I watch you on KLN always. And the moment you stood there, I knew you were the one. That person must have been watching and watching and watching and watching. And I've started seeing me in the dream. You know, there are people that see me in the dream. Even here. You see me in the dream, right? Because you are hearing me too much. Too much activity. So you start seeing me all over. So the same way it's happening with me and people. That's how it will be happening with you and people. Because the same way I'm impacting you. You too, by evangelism and discipleship, you'll be impacting people. Who will impact people? Who will impact people? So there will be multiplication of impact. If you agree with me, can I hear a powerful amen? Say with me, I'm a fisherman. I'm a tent maker. I raise men for the kingdom of God. I didn't hear a powerful amen. I'd like you to grab somebody and begin to pray for that person. That the passion, the zeal, the fire for souls, the fire for evangelism, the passion to save souls and to raise disciples will increase in the heart and in the life of your neighbor. Let's pray together for one another. The zeal, the fire, the zeal of the house of the Lord. The zeal, the fire. Angele nemo sokolo de bobo la braga da bara la gra da bara ga angele nemo sa angele nemo sa angele nemo sa angele nemo sa let's minister to one another online let's pray for each other online let's pray for each other 
Online, let's pray for each other. Ligro da ba 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 rakata nekelewa. Engele mo sata laba. Engele ne mo sonia. Agala da bara. Leave that person. Look for another person. Let's move in, move in, move in. Look for some people you've not met before. Look for some people you've not seen before. All our pastors minister to people. Lay hands on people. Let's speak over people's lives. Uh, that the zeal for evangelism, the zeal for souls, uh, the passion for souls. Uh, that fishermen will be raised in this church. Uh, that tent makers will be raised in this church. Uh, Agasaya, 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 Agasaya. Oh, steer up your neighbor, steer up your neighbor. Provoke them unto good works. Zino o sekele rebos. Hey! Branda gangle ne mo sotala na mas. Rando lobo robo regede de de sekele rebos. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lengo sekele rebos sayana mas. Reko shakan legre ne manano shikalalabaya. You can lose the hand and pray for yourself. The zeal of God has consumed me. I'm on fire in my soul to see men brought to the kingdom, to raise men for the kingdom. I'm on fire in my heart. The zeal of God, the zeal of God, the zeal of God for evangelism, for raising disciples. That passion, my heart is a glow, my mind is a glow. Rako elebo shakayanamas. Ningo shakayadas. Ningo shakayadas. The nations are open. The continents are open. The gospel is penetrating. The hearts of men are open to the gospel. Reko subarana manamalama sonia namas. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I pray for everybody under the sound of my voice in this building, in all our campuses, global, online, and everywhere people are hearing the sound of my voice on radio. I ask that the zeal, the passion, the fire for evangelism, raising disciples, and building men for the kingdom is upon everyone hearing the sound of my voice. In the name of Jesus, we preach the gospel in and out of season. You are strengthened with might by the Spirit. You shine the light in the midst of darkness. You shine the light in the midst of darkness. You shine the light in the midst of darkness. You shine the light in the midst of darkness. Father, we give you praise. We fight the good fight of faith. We keep the faith. We keep the message. And we proclaim it on the mountaintop. Men are coming to the knowledge of the truth. Disciples are raised all over the place. And we give you praise for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. Let's celebrate the word of the Lord this afternoon. Is that a celebration? Glory! Woo! Amen. Grab your honor offering. Let's give in honor of the word online. The banking details are scrolling. Radio audience, Mr. Michael Bush, read the bank accounts for you. Let's honor the word of God. Every time we teach the word in this church, we give you the opportunity to honor the word of God with your generosity, with your giving, so we can get this word around the world. Thank you for giving online, on TV, on radio, and everybody giving in the campuses. Father, thank you for everyone giving. We give in faith. We give with joy. And we thank you for the privilege to learn and to be equipped by your word. Lord, we pray that this word goes around the world. Men are brought to the knowledge of the truth. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can I hear a powerful amen? 
online we're signing you off remember every evening 6 p.m the services are on and every afternoon 12 noon gmt plus one the services are on remember tomorrow is pastoral institute for students of the of the institute also remember we're in london second to the fifth of june and all the details are on the screen and uh, for those who don't have details send a mail to dr abel damina at yahoo.com for london conference we'll furnish you details and then finally 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 at the beginning of the service we spoke about we spoke about all that god is doing in this season around this ministry and uh, we talked about 30 days of glory we talked about the power bible school exclusive for power citizens so those who want to be part of it send a mail to dr abel damina your country and your phone number so we can reach you and discuss details with you of the power bible school july the first monday to the end to the first second monday of august which is the end of homecoming it's going to be exciting as a as a whole of our campuses all over the world everybody comes in here a lot of our people in america already booking buying tickets and booking hotels even from china from japan you know from all the african countries europe united kingdom canada i mean we have our people coming from all over the world for homecoming it's going to be very brutal highly corrosive and even within the country people are coming from all over the states it's going to be a joy wouldn't you want to see your brethren around the world it's going to be a great time so plan and let's make it happen big time all right praise god we're going to sign you guys off we'll see you as we bring the next service to you in the course of the week and every day 12 noon and 6 p.m gmt plus one and don't forget wednesday is midweek service enjoy the rest of the day and be blessed anywhere on the pulpit to drop your offerings hit the music as we celebrate the risen lord glory to god hallelujah i'm a young the glad that jesus came <laughs> yeah simple song y'all listen listen i'm glad he came jesus I'm glad you came, Jesus. Everybody sing with me. I'm glad you came. I'm glad you came. Sing Jesus. I'm glad you came. His name is Jesus. Sing one more time. I'm glad you came. Trust that you have been blessed by this message. To order the complete series of this message and all the messages by Dr. Abel Daminer, please call plus 234-806-800-9939 or email powercityoffice at gmail.com.